Thank you, Ingemar, very much for the kind introduction. And thanks to Triangle for, the, for organizing the great event. It was a, a fascinating, great start yesterday with the award shows. You were right, Ingemar. I have been working personally much on regulation and on, uh, on liberalization. But I won't be speaking about that today. But Triangle, as a start into this session, has asked me to present a brief summary of uh, the current position of a number of uh, postal operators and their challenges and their differences in business models. So I will try to present this quickly in time and in a nutshell. And my ambition would be to, uh, to facilitate a perhaps more informed discussion and to structure our, uh, our thoughts uh, for the discussion afterwards. In a way, I feel like wrapping up and picking on many of the elements uh, that we have been hearing directly from the actors in the morning sessions. Um, so I don't think I will be able to add much new information to that, but I may be able to structure some of that and put a different perspective, my perspective, on this. Just technical question, how do I move the slides here to the organizers? This? OK. Beautiful, beautiful. For those of you who might not know WIK, we're not a postal operator, so we're not so uh, uh, popular and, uh, and nobody in the street will know our firm. Some of you may, for those who don't, we are a research institute in Germany owned by the German government. We do not-for-profit not research and we do contract work in regulated industries telecommunications, postal services, energy, and so on. We're all economists, so we provide economic advice in regular industries and market intelligence, market information um, to operators in these industries. I personally direct our postal work. We are about 40 uh, professional consultants, almost all economists at WIK, and I'm very proud today to sit on a panel um, with excellent uh, co-panelists, of course, two of which um, had started their professional careers at WIK. So guess which ones? It's been a way since that. Um, we have a consulting branch, WIK and WIK uh, Vic Consult are about the same. Um, we provide our consulting services through Vic Consult. We work mostly in Europe. We're not primarily a German firm because the topic in regulation has become so European that the same work, of course, can be done in any European country. What will I be speaking about today? Um, I will briefly, on one slide each, summarize case studies of the current status of, uh, of six different uh, postal operators. You see these operators listed here on the left-hand side. This is admittedly an arbitrary choice. There's other very interesting operators out there too, but I couldn't discuss all of them today. After going quickly through the summary of, of where these operators are, I will discuss the current challenges that operators are facing, and not all of them will be safe, uh, facing the same challenges. Uh, markets are different from country to country, and more even more so the responses that these operators are giving uh, and the, the mix of the different tools they are combining is very different. So it's interesting to see um, how operators uh, behave and respond to challenges. I have uh, grouped the operators by alphabet, not by size. So I'll start with, uh, with uh, D for DHL Deutsche Post. We all know DHL is more of an express and logistics company for a long time than a mail company. So mail is roughly about a third in total revenues today. It used to be provide financial services too until pretty recently, but has completely divested the postal bank and therefore provides uh, hardly any postal services at all anymore. If we look at how business developed over the last years, um, the mail business has been affected by structural decline, but compared to other markets, not so much so in Germany. So mail revenues were down, but only modestly so 
even though there is quite some competition in the mail market in Germany. Revenues of DHL in Express and Logistics were up again last year after only one bad year in the, in the economic uh, recession in 2009. If we look at the profitability uh, of the different business segments in the chart in the lower left side, for a long time, uh, Deutsche Post, like many other incumbents, were relying quite a bit on uh, profits from the mail segment. That has changed quite a bit, and uh, mail and uh, express are contributing almost equally to the profits of DHL today. What are the objectives that uh, DHL has given um, itself for the future? So this is a, a quote of some th things I picked up and found interesting from uh, DHL presentations and, uh, and documentation. They want to clearly focus on their home mar market um, and uh, maintain the focus on their core business, of course. Uh, they also are continuing the focus uh, to be a global provider of logistics, but they, uh, my impression is that they have become a little bit more cautious in targeting uh, global expansion. While they still have a clear global ambition, um, they adopt a more cautious approach in uh, looking at businesses in other countries and other industries and target on those that really uh, are assessed profitable um, and uh, may not go for uh, as, much, as much, uh, much risk than they used to be. Domestically, Deutsche Post has invested enormously over the last uh, months in uh, products around digital communication in a secure, uh, primarily uh, in, a, in a secure email product called Epos Brief, where they have had one of the largest marketing campaigns in Germany that I can remember personally, and I'm 35 years old, ever. French Group La Poste, if you look at the split of the revenues by different segments, is uh, quite a different firm. Mail still accounts for much more majority uh, of total revenues of La Poste. Um, other very important business lines are financial services and, uh, and uh, smaller but very interesting and very uh, um, uh, strong and profitable um, parcels and express business. In terms of profitability, mail does not have a very important uh, part is contributing to uh, profitability of, uh, of Group La Post today, whereas financial services, services are a very profitable business um, to Group La Post. Over the last years, mail revenues have been affected quite, uh, quite harshly, in particular volumes went down quite a bit, and even though prices, in particular public stamp prices, have increased quite considerably in, uh, in, uh, in France, revenues still went down. In the stable, they have pretty stable development of revenues in uh, express and mo mostly parcels in the case of, uh, of Coupe La Poste, Geopost, and a very solid business and good prospects in financial services. The strategic uh, ambitions of, uh, of Coupe La Poste for the next uh, four years are primarily to focus on parcel and express, but only in Europe, not globally. Uh, to continue the strong focus on financial services and to improve operations, particularly in the post office network, uh, but also in sorting process. There have recently been, and we have heard in the morning, about some product innovations uh, around digital products, mobile access and mail products, um, but those seem not to contribute very much to, uh, to revenues as of today, but are, uh, are plans for the, for the very near future. In many industries, and Postal is no exception here, uh, Scandinavian uh, operators and suppliers are, in a way, early birds and innov early innovators. Um, and I think that is true uh, with some, uh, some extent also in the, uh, in the postal area, postal sector. I have picked the Finnish uh, Itella Corporation here, um, where you see in the revenue split, Itella uh, has important, uh, the most important revenue source still in mail and mail-related products, document output, document management, has some logistics business. Um, given 
uh, the, the very high online penetration in Scandinavia and the Nordic countries generally, but in Finland also. Mail volume decline is a massive pro, uh, problem to Itella, and revenues have been affected uh, quite a bit in some years and could be compensated only by, ex, uh, by uh, expanding into mail related services, both in Finland and in uh, countries nearby in the Baltics and Russia. There's a solid growth uh, in express and logistics, but profits of Itella still very much rely on mail. Uh, more than half of total profits uh, are from the mail segment. The objectives Itella has given itself are to focus on uh, logistic services primarily, to expand geographically into uh, Europe, but that mostly is uh, the countries surrounding the Baltic Sea and, uh, and Germany. Uh, and Russia, the direct neighbor. Uh, Itella has quite a strong position compared to other postal operators in digital communications um, and has a, uh, noticeable revenues from uh, secure email uh, products already. Royal Mail, again, is a very big firm that we all know. Uh, well, and we all know, um, seems to be in some trouble at the moment, or at least in some unrest. Royal Mail very much, very much relies on, uh, on mail in the total revenue mix. 70% of total revenues are from mail. Uh, it has a substantial business in Express Logistics, GLS Group, and some other services. But Royal Mail is also very much affected by volume declines uh, lately partly because of the structural changes in the market and partly because of excess competition um, that doesn't reduce the overall mail volume that Royal Mail is delivering, but it reduces the prices they can charge for it, so revenues are suffering. Um, so overall revenues in the mail segment for Royal Mail went down over the last years, even though the regulator has been approving price increases to a very substantial, a very substantial um, amount over the last years. Royal Mail at the moment, at present, is in a, in a relatively uncertain uh, position because legislation is pending on such crucial issues as privatization that was discussed in the, in, uh, in the past and the overall postal sector policy um, is likely to be revised. It's quite clear what the outcome will be, but um, the discussions in Parliament have been going on for three or four years. Um, so there is a phase of instability at the moment. Good news on Royal Mail is that the uh, the parcels and express business GLS that they're having uh, is uh, the uh, relatively the most profitable business line. What uh, is Royal Mail uh, trying to achieve for the next year? Um, they still have a clear focus on modernizing their operations, probably for good reasons, um, and they are, uh, have the ambition to expand the range of products, primarily in financial and insurance products that are offered in uh, in post offices. Swiss Post, the next company, the next slide here, is quite different from, from other national postal operators in that uh, the four big business lines that they're having, the last including public transportation, which is a peculi peculiarity in, uh, yeah, for postal operators in, uh, in, in Switzerland, but also in, uh, in, in Austria. The four business lines are almost equally strong. Um, mail is less than one quarter of total revenues of Swiss Post, uh, but has traditionally been a very important contribution to overall group profits. Mail revenues have uh, declined very substantially lately. Financial services are increasingly profitable and increasingly important, and an important uh, element in, in uh, Swiss Post strategy. The presence in foreign markets or in domestic operations in foreign markets um, has been withdrawn a bit over the last years. There were more ambitions, I remember, two or three years ago to go into other markets, uh, but less so today. So the strategic objectives uh, for Swiss Post in cooperation with the councils that are formed by government, of course, because Swiss Post is owned by the government, are to focus primarily on domestic markets now. 
Um, last, TNT. TNT, of course, is an express firm more than a mail firm, uh, and will be two firms very soon. So it's a bit difficult to to think about the uh, strategy going forward for the two firms that haven't even been separated now, but the, the clear objective is there. Um, if I look at the current status, uh, mail revenues, mail volumes in the Netherlands have been going down, but TNT was able to compensate some of that losses by new mail revenue in other countries. So overall, the mail revenues of the group have remained stable. Interesting bits that I found in strategy announcements of TNT for the postal part for the last years was to say we have a cautious approach. We focus on the countries where we think we can be strong. Netherlands, Germany, UK, and Italy. Of course, next to the Netherlands, their home country. Um, but uh, I haven't heard much about ambitions to go into other countries. And of course, uh, the postal part of the new demerger will also have significant parcel operations. Whereas the express side will obviously uh, work on the existing express business, and there might be some overlap, I could imagine, between the parcel operations of the two uh, TNT firms. In terms of uh, profit, mail still is uh, the most important contribution to profit of TNT uh, overall, certainly was last year. The challenges that they're, they're, therefore, the ch they're, therefore the challenges that they are they are facing in their home markets are very different, um, but there's a few commonalities among those. Um, one is structural change, structural changes and e-substitution in the market. Second is competition in, in a number of countries in the mail markets, um, but also competition from other media, of course. And third is they uh, all rely on general economic trends. And this hits particularly bad when the economy is bad. So all that leads in the traditional business on a, on a strong pressure on prices, both from direct competition but also from substitution. And it has been increasingly leading to uh, declines in mail volume. So the profits are going away. Um, through cost programs, it might be able to maintain profitability or increase it for a short time, but we will never get back to a um, to a, a situation where mail profits can be as high as they used to be six or seven years ago for the most efficient operators. What can they do? Those are things that have been, discussing, uh, have been discussed here this morning. I think there's three groups of responses. First is find new business. Second is get more efficient. And the third one is ask customers for more money. I will go through a number of examples of what developers have been doing uh, in these three areas, but I think the first ones are those to focus on. Increasing prices uh, is good if the price level is too low, but at least in those operators that I'm comparing here, the price trend was quite up over the last years, um, and my assessment would be that uh, it's a risky bet to increase prices even further because it might harm the market overall, um, and once the volume is gone, it will never come back. So what have operators done to improve the cost base? And in light of time, I will just focus on a few of those items. Um, some of the examples we have been he hearing in the morning already, there's operational improvements, of course, in the branch network, which is a huge cost. The example of Deutsche Post is one where there is no traditional post office at all anymore. All have been converted to agencies. And almost the same is true in Finland now, where 900 of more than 1,000 just more than 1,000 post offices are now retail agencies. Uh, sorting technology and networks have been, uh, uh, have been continuously improved, and some operators are better at it, and some are not so good and still have homework to do. There's interesting innovations recently in more flexible delivery networks, where some products, for example, direct mail, are not delivered every day, so that you can have different delivery routes. There was an interesting example for plans in Austria on that in the morning and already existing practice in Germany and, in, and for TNT Post on that. Employment, of course, needs to be reduced in the mail segment if the, volume, uh, the business is going down. Um, but one interesting trend that we incre increasingly see is to outsource employment. 
In the parcels market, there always was practice of having independent drivers for some firms. But in mail, we are seeing some examples of having low, more flexible or lower wage <coughs> examples already. For example, in the Netherlands, TNT owns a separate firm called Network Phase Pay that offers different employment conditions and more flexible um, and less fre frequent delivery and can offer cheaper products. A somewhat similar but larger, smaller scale uh, situation is there for Deutsche Post also that owns a different delivery firm um, that has other labor conditions and lower wages. And in the morning we've heard of an example in Austria also where Fibra, a subsidiary of Austria Post, will start to deliver as of June, if I am uh, heard this right in the morning, to deliver addressed mail in competition to Austria Post. And Fibra, again, does not uh, abide with the same collective wage agreements that the incumbent does. So this is, if business would be shifted into these subsidiaries, there's an uh, important cost savings, but also a very controversial social issue. The last day, the day here today was very interesting. It was very interesting to listen to all the ideas to develop new business. So I will be brief on this. But basically the choices are, I think, the, the first choice is to expand to international markets if operators feel strong enough for that. And there's a number of positive experience, probably TNT being the most important. Um, there is the whole area of digital communication and online services where there's many ideas but it's not cl clear that much revenue is generated for now. So that's still, um, still a bet that involves more risk because the, the future is more uncertain on that one. Financial services seem to work well for posts in some markets, very well in fact in Italy for example but also in France, but not at all in other countries. So these, they're probably the, the banking landscape is very different in different countries. And B2C parcels are the rising star for a long time. Um, and posts have been very, some posts have been very proactive in uh, promoting B2C parcels by offering good pickup solutions, either an automated system like uh, for Deutsche Post um, or with kiosks. So postal operators can respond to challenges by becoming more efficient, finding new business, or increasing prices. This is just, I, I, we collected, a lot, this is my last uh, slide now also, um, we just compiled a bit data on the simplest, simplest price measure, measure for postal prices, the 20 gram standard rate, which also is a guiding price because most other price and discounts relate to the 20 gram stamp rate. Um, the first chart here gives a summary of, uh, of, uh, of euro prices for the different, um, for the 20 gram products in the different countries. And we see quite, quite a stretch here. Um, with in the middle ground between, between 53 and 58 cents, the three big European countries, uh, um, uh, Germany, um, the UK and France. But what is perhaps more interesting is the trend over the last year. This slide here, uh, the, the chart here gives you the increase in the 20 gram stamp rate over the last 10 year in nominal terms. And we can see that whereas in Germany the, uh, the, uh, the uh, post was almost the same over the whole period or went down a little bit in fact. Um, on the top you have Royal Mail that including the price increases of this year have uh, been able to increase tariffs by 70% in total over the period, which is quite a massive uh, shock and, and, and change to, uh, to mailers. But uh, in the middle ground, a number of other operators have uh, quite considerably increased prices despite all the cost efficiency. So if we think about liberalization now, many people were expecting competition in the market to lead to lower prices for customers. Not clear that happened here. So we feel there is substantial recent price increases. They are often justified by decline, recent declines in volume, so there is reason for this, but this is also a risk. 
if you further increase prices, well, you might go down even more, um, and this could turn into a, into, into a re really difficult situation. This was about 20 gram single piece rates. Bulk tariffs, of course, have likely increased less. There is no clear transparent data, but, but all the indications we have is that the, that the tariffs increased less, but also increased in many countries. Um, but we are feeling in a number of countries now that it's difficult for postal operators to really get away with price increases in their communication with the customers because they feel that, uh, that, that the volume will, will go down if prices are increased even more. So there is some risk in that and it's not clear how regulators will re uh, react to applications for further price increases uh, in the next years. Some, uh, one last sentence, there's very different models, very different operators, very different models of responding to the challenges and uh, the different operators we're seeing in Europe take very different priorities on the three big measures, cutting on costs, uh, developing new business, and uh, increasing prices. It will be very interesting to see how they are choosing their mix over the last years, and I look forward to future conferences to see how, uh, uh, what, how real life evidence uh, has been for operators responding to current challenges. Um, certainly, there are difficulties but I think the future is not, uh, we shouldn't be too pessimistic about the future. There still is at the moment a profitable core business and there is the opportunity uh, to innovate and to find new niches. And I very much look forward to seeing how the markets will be developing in the next years. For now, I thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to respond to questions.